Hi, there's Jan here with the third part of the Bucato Estense mini album and gift box set uh, tutorial. So, um, as you can see, I have put quite a few finishing touches to the mini album, but only the things that you can, you know, that are going to be easy to stick down. So, this is my final album. Um, so, it looks like this on the front. Um, lots of little um, bits and pieces, lots of gems, etc. And let me just remind you that everything that you see on my album will come in the kit. There's, and more actually, there are lots and lots and lots of bits and pieces like this and this, all the cutouts that you can use to make your own take on where you want to put things. Um, right, so this is going to be the front cover. It's going to be the spine. And that's that little hole that I asked you to make as well because we're going to attach a, a charm and this charm will also be in the in the kit. If you're making this at home, um, you know, it's nice to thread some beads and that together and you will need a, quite a large brad. So that size brad to be able to attach these to the spine. Um, on all the pages, I have edged mine with chipped sapphire because distress ink, which I think goes really well with all of the, the papers here. So that's what this is. Right, okay, and this is the back cover. It's fairly plain. There's a little bit of um, little bit of stuff here little bit of um, sort of interest here but you want it fairly flat and plain because it needs to sit flat in the out in the in the gift box like that right let me just put this aside for a moment we're going to fix that on so um, I can show you probably from the middle outwards what the inside is going to look like because it's mirrored so these are yet to be stuck in I'm going to talk you through this so this is our half pocket page and all of these tags and um, uh, picture mats are going to come with this. So there are those, they fit into that pocket. This is the pocket on the other side and you fit tags and you can actually make a long tag to fit in here. This is our waterfall. As you can see, it looks really pretty. Oh, um, this is my own instructions for when we get around to putting this in. Okay, so it's really nice. And then it opens this way as well. And this is the booklet. And if you remember, I said to you to cut, you can cut two pieces this size. And one was to go in here if you'd like to, you know, when you open it up, you can see another picture in here. So this is another picture mat fit into this belly band as well, as many as you want. That's the booklet and the booklet comes out so that you can just kind of take it with you or whatever you want to do with it. So that's the booklet and it's for, you can put your pictures and your journaling or whatever you want to do on there. This is the envelope and mine is held down by this piece of lace and it's also a pocket so behind it you can fit your tags you can fit more picture mats as well as inside it holds quite a lot of picture mats and tags of all sizes okay so that slips down there and fits under my lace you can just leave it loose if you want to but i just you know thought it was nice to slip it behind there okay so that's that way now it also opens this way this is our plain page you need somewhere just to have something plain and you can put um, a photo put it however you want it to be or just leave it plain as you want and this is our multi-layered pocket page oops a bit of dust there this is our spine cover which is going to go on afterwards so this is our multi-layered pocket page our flat page and inside here you have the first pocket and you have you can put in lots of your tags and picture mats and in the back you can get lots and lots i've put in two just for now because i'm kind of going to run out of picture mats okay so that's what the finished album is going to look like mirrored on this side and that's what we're going to work on today 
So let's close this up and let's begin. So the first thing, excuse me, just dropped something. The first thing I want to help you with is the envelope. If you have a punch board, an envelope punch board, that's absolutely fine and it's very easy to make the envelope which is five and a half by three and three quarters. The sizes were on that, um, the, the cut list that I gave you at the start. So um, I'll go, th I'll go over it again if there's time at the end. So five and a half is 14 centimetres by 9.6 centimetres. Okay. If you don't have a, a an envelope cut, uh, punch board, I'm going to show you how to make this envelope. Okay. Right. So let's start with that. I've done it on white here, so it's easy for you to see. And the first thing you need to do is to cut a piece of card. That is. Hold on. Let me just find my um, my sheet. Excuse me for a moment. Right, the envelope, first of all you need a piece of paper, double sided paper, that is seven and one eighth square, which is 18 centimetres square. And then you need to, on all sides, measure round three eighths of an inch, which is 0 0.9 centimetres, and draw a line, you know, a faint line. It doesn't matter which side you do it, it's, you know, depends on which side you want as the outside and which side you want as the inside. Okay, so you draw a faint line all the way around it like that. Then, holding your envelope, choose a side, choose whichever. On the first side, you're going to measure along from the outside edge of the envelope. You're going to measure across two, uh, sorry, Yes, two and seven eighths of an inch. Two and seven eighths, which is 7.3. And you put a little mark there, a little pencil mark, like that. Then you turn it 90 degrees. So you turn it once and you measure across four and one eighth from the left side. And you put a little mark here, four and one eighth. Then you turn it 90 degrees again and measure across 2 and 7 eighths again as you did before. Then 90 degrees again and 4 and 7 eighths. So you have two sides that are 4 and 7 eighths and two sides that are 2 and 7 eighths. Then all you need to do then is join up those lines. Don't forget the dot is on your, where you've made your little mark is on this three eighths of an inch line that you've drawn here. So you, you draw a line here, you join up all of these here, here, not to the outside edge, to here, where you put your little dot, to there and to there. And then all you have to do is score along those lines and fold it up and you end up with um, you end up with your envelope which looks like that and I like to cut this piece off but you don't have to and fold that down and round your corners okay and that is your that's how to make your envelope if you're not using a punch board and I'm going to keep this as a template because it's very handy right okay so having made that let's make a start now, as you can see, what I've done with the album so far is I've stuck down all the things that don't need bits doing to them. So the outside paper you have, I've stuck it down and I've obviously done my embellishing as well. You can stick down your outside spine which and, and make the hole through it. And you can also stick down the back. Okay, now inside, you can stick down the inside front cover. Let me remove this a moment. I've done this all with um, removable tape, I hope. So you stick down the, your inside front cover. 
you can, if you remember rightly, oh, you can you can stick this down onto your little booklet because nothing else needs to happen to that. I'll show you how to do this bit in a moment. These are, you will have the measurements for your spines and you can actually get those stuck down, that one, this one. On here, let me remove this. With strong double re removable tape that doesn't want to remove. Which is a bit of a nuisance. Hmm. Uh, do you know, I knew something would happen. This is going to be covered, so we don't worry about that. We have, this is your top pocket, the top of your pocket, and I'll show you how to do that. This is the bottom of the pocket. And as you can see, I've already stuck some of the cutter parts down. So you can actually stick that down if you want to. There. Now I've stuck mine closer to the bottom so that I can put edging along the top. Okay. Then on this page here, we have this, uh, the, the, the large pocket and I'm going to show you how to do the small part of the pocket which is this bit there we go let's take that out and then on this page here excuse me this page here this is my um, plain page so I can stick that down as well and on here, these are my pockets and I'm going to show you how to um, fit these all together in a moment. Let's see if I can just remove that. Double side, uh, the removable tape seems to want to be permanent. Trust my luck. So you will have, at the moment, ignore all these pieces are going to be covered up, obviously. You will have this, and this will either be sort of straight for you if you want it like that, or, you know, it'll have a decorative edge, punched edge, or this one's a die cut edge, and this. But this will be covered up by the, the topping, so not to worry about that. <clears throat> okay, so let's make a start on this. Right, okay, so as I said... Once you've gone past the outer cover and the inside cover, we can stick our envelope down. We can adhere our envelope. And I'm just going to go over my sticky bits with an anti-stack pad. Just to make sure they don't stick down anymore since that um, double-sided tape Right, okay, so once you've made your envelope, we're going to put it in a sort of an offset position like that. It can't be too much offset because it will go off the page. But when you're lining it up, make sure that you miss that, that um, fold line there and that you don't come outside of the page. But it's nice to have a little um, diagonal uh, bit of shape to it, just as a little added bit of interest. I'm actually going to put mine this way round, I think, like that. And I have already put tape on three sides, so the two sides and the bottom. I'm leaving the top free because I want this to be a pocket as well, as I just showed you. So I'm going to take the tape off. One, two, three. I'm going to line this up. So it's always recommended, I always recommend that you, you put this on your page first to see where you think it's going to go. 
so that once you've taken your tape off you can pretty much stick it down straight away and I'm putting mine quite close to the bottom because I want to be able to put tags inside like where are some of my tags let me find a tag I want to be able to put tags in the top like that so effectively it makes a pocket okay so you can stick that down you can stick down one of your smaller spines here now this is how to do this belly band page you will have been asked to cut two pieces which again have stuck themselves completely down on mine one and two and I think by just looking at what I was doing there you can get the gist of how this fits together so you're going to first of all first of all you will have measured this you will have measured this into the middle um, as we did in the last part of this tutorial there's obviously my measuring lines there and then all you need to do is these half page pieces are going to slot very carefully inside here inside the belly band and fit the page leaving a small gap at the side. Now the reason for doing this is so that you don't run out of paper. This Bricato Stents or any 12 by 12 pad um, of the designer ones has very, you know, they're very kind of tight with the paper and it's very hard to do, to get much out of it unless you really, really piece it together. So, um, that's what I've done with this in order to make it fit. So I'm just going to glue this down. Now I use, excuse me, I use this Collal, um, it's a spirit glue, so you need your window open um, or a fan on or something or your door open. But it gives you so much wiggle room, it's brilliant, it's absolutely brilliant. And I use it quite a lot actually. So that in combination with my Cosmic Shimmer White Glue which basically sticks anything to anything if you need it to. I've not, I, I stick all my embellishments, including my large flowers down with the um, Cosmic Shimmer Glue, and I don't really find the need to use um, a glue gun, but obviously, you know, people can if they want to. So you just carefully push this in here, inside. It will just go in just a little bit, maybe eighth to a quarter of an inch and then carefully carefully line this up with the outside edge so that you have the same gap here as you do here either side of your spine and push that down and then the same with the other side as well Part of the tutorial will finish the album but obviously there's going to be another part to the whole tutorial in order to finish the box the gift box part of it as well there we go I'm gonna get that lined up with just that tiny margin there and stick that down and then all you need is your um, booklet uh, sorry, your belly band, which I've already put my tape onto. And this is the way I do my tape. I don't know if I've showed you before. I go all the way around the outside and I put a piece in the middle. I do this for cards and that as well. I just find it very easy for lining up if you're not at all sure about how to line up. And I put it where I think it needs to go. Get it lined up as best I can. Like that so that I've got my little boulders and then I can just press down the middle where I've taken the backing off and that will hold it while you go around and take off all your bits of other backing and it won't move.
push that under, just tuck that under a bit, that can stick down, and then you can remove these pieces. So don't forget, this, this you'll be doing twice. You'll be doing one for this side of the book and one for the other side. There we go, there's your belly band and your booklet which you will already have stuck down your front cover page will fit into here. Now just be careful when you fit this in because this is a cut piece of paper here sometimes it tends to catch on there so in all the first few times of putting it in I try and shoehorn it in like that just to make sure and that fits on there okay then you have um, the wider spine here so let's get that stuck on permanently so you have two sizes of spine one is the narrower one that's for this part here the wider spine is for these two pieces where you see that this spine here is thicker that's for those two so let's get this one done and the easiest way to do that is to open out the booklet apply your glue now this is where I'm going to use my uh, cosmic shimmer glue because I don't need any wiggle room on this paper's just curled up where I already had it stuck down there we go. and you just line that up leaving your margin top and bottom and making sure that you don't go over your your fold lines you may as I did in my case need to just trim it by hand a little bit you take off an absolute tiny hair's width. I don't have a piece to show you, but if you just trim it before you stick it down, before you apply any glue, trim it to fit. Make sure that it goes sort of in here. And I think it's you know it, it's impossible to cut it to size beforehand because it's not even a sixteenth of an inch. It's even smaller than that. So you just have to do it as and when. Right, so this is now going to be your waterfall page. Seems a bit daft to take it off and then add it back on. But this repositionable tape that I used doesn't seem to want to be repositional. Right, okay, so again, I'm just taking off my center piece here. I'm going to line it up, making sure all my borders are how I want them. There's a good white edging to these pages, which I like. I think it really sets it off. And also, as I say, it makes the most of the paper. If we made them any smaller, if we made them any larger, so you had a smaller white border, you wouldn't be able to get the amount of pages and that out of one pad. But obviously, if you are using your own paper and you have lots of it, and you want to make smaller borders, go for it. So that's stuck down. This is one side. Get my next sides. I'm sorry if you hear any background noises. I've got my window open because of the spirit glue. And because it's actually quite warm here at the moment, which is amazing, given the fact that we've had sort of non never ending snow and ice and particularly rain. My goodness, we must have had a whole year's rainfall in the last month and a half, I should think. Right, there we go. So that's stuck down. Now to add your waterfall pages, what I asked you to do was to cut a piece that's this size that is um, three and seven eighths by five 
four in centimeters that is 9.9 .9, possibly 10 by 12.6 12.7 and now what I want you to do let's fold this up out of the way a moment what I want you to do now is to as you can see I've done here is to measure up from the bottom of that piece half an inch uh, yes half an inch there we go, half an inch, which is 1.2 centimetres. But please, please check your centimetres because we don't use centimetres here, or at least I don't anyway. So I can only sort of do my best with it. So I want you to measure up half an inch, 1.2 centimetres, and then another half an inch. And we are going to cut those off because these are the pieces that go on the bottom part of the waterfall. So just carefully cut those off. I've already put tape on the back of mine, as you can see here. You just have to ignore my markings. When you get yours in the kit, you will have pencil markings on it. I'll try to do as many as I can on the back, but some will be on the front, but you just rub them out. But um, I can't on this one. Right, okay, so you have your waterfall flaps, which you will have cut to four and one eighth. There we go, which you will have cut to four and one eighth. Let's just double check with you. Which you will have cut to four and one eighth by four and three quarters, which is roughly 10.5 centimetres by 12. And the top half an inch you will have scored and folded over and I think we went over this in the last video and you didn't stick these down which is the mistake I did make in a previous um, sort of video all right okay so choosing your first one so make sure that you have your your longest edge here and you score across so these then end up as a four and an eight um, square once they're stuck down Right, okay, so you take your first one. I've smooched mine all the way round with my colour. I'm going to stick this down in the middle. Just square it up where you want it to be. Where you want it to be, which is about... About there. There we go. And then you can remove all your backing tapes as per usual. Now, going back to the album, let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Going back to the album, you will see that on the inside pages of the waterfall, there is just a strip of paper and there is also this strip at the top, okay? But I've stuck, I've chosen to stick my lace on the inside so that it looks better I did, uh, just for this lace, I didn't like the outside of it here, so I wanted it underneath. But it also works as a stopper for your photo, whatever you're going to put there. Okay, so at, at this point, you know, you probably would put your lace on if you wanted to. Right, so that's the first one of those. Now our next waterfalls pages are all the same. 
And let's just rub out these bits here because it's clear that they're the waterfall. Rub that off. And this. As I say, this is just my mock-up album. So yours will be sort of a lot neater. Okay, and choose which way round you want to have your paper. The reason I've cut it like this is because if you can see from this waterfall, I don't know if you can tell, is that, you know, if you haven't got the lace there, you can't see with, can't see it as well with the lace. Let's just tuck it under if I can. But the reason I cut it this way is because this pattern continues all the way down and that's a really nice effect if you have if you're using even your own paper um, and you have a picture here and you like the picture you can just carry it on all the way down as opposed to finding different different sheets of paper to go on here so by doing these videos I'm hoping to give you some sort of hints and tips as well at the same time so that's your first waterfall page now the bit that follows on from this is this one, yep, so this one is going on here, going on the second page, just remove my backing, not the easiest job with no nails but I'll give it my best shot. Finally came off. So it went up that way, didn't it? Is it that way? Yes. That way. And you just put that on the bottom, giving yourself exactly the same border as you did before. Before I stick it down, it's probably a good idea actually to lay this one on top. That way you can see how much border you left and just kind of line it up. So that's there and there. It's just those little touches that make it, you know, really special if everything lines up. There, you see? And the same with this one here. So the piece that carries on from here is that way up. There we go. I'm going to line this up on here. Getting it straight. Attempt to take this tape off in one go. There we go. And lining that up, I can stick this to the bottom. Right, okay. Now if you've seen the previous videos of mine, I'll show you how to do waterfalls. But I will go through this again. So that's your bottom one, that's the middle one, and this is the top one. Now on this waterfall, we want the top one to line up pretty much with the top of the page okay and the bottom one to not come past the bottom of the page so I'm going to stick this down um, so I'm going to measure I'll find the center of the page which I always do which in this case will be two and three quarters so let's do that first two and three quarters which is going to be there Put a little tiny mark and a little bit further down two and three quarters that's the center of the page and that in metric is two and three quarters seven centimeters so we know where these are going to go and if you want to, you can certainly measure the, which will be two and one sixteenth. Two and one sixteenth, which I'm going to measure down here. Probably easier. 
2 and 1 16th, which is there. Right, now then, we want, in order to get this pretty much at the top of the page, there's the centre line there, like that. And the next one goes just underneath it. Obviously, I'm just lining it up just to show you. And this one will go here. We have to measure up from the bottom of the page. Um, oh, no, actually, we can do it from the top of the page down. It's just as simple. Um, I think last album I did, I measured up from the bottom of the page. <clears throat> So we're going to line this up, centre it up with our centre line, which is there. And I'm going to push this up to pretty much, not quite, but pretty much the top of the page. And I'm going to just put a little mark here and here. And that's where this is going to go. So I'm going to take off the backing tape. tape push any little bits under you don't want anything hanging over it at all and I'm also going to apply a little bit of this glue you can use any wet glue I'm just going to use this one because this gives you a bit of slide room a bit of wiggle room just to get the first one lined up how you need to and sometimes it's invaluable there's nothing to be gained by kind of trying to do it without these aids so i'm going to look for the little pencil marks that i made which is one here and one here and hold that down where i wanted it to be with just a little bit of see how many times you can pick it up and put it down again if you've got um some wet glue on here once with with them um, just tape you once you put it down you've put it down basically Although I have in the past been able to raise something that was in the wrong place by using my hot glue gun to heat it up and very carefully use a spatula underneath it. Um, I haven't got one to hand to show you, but a thin spatula. Oh, yes, I have. There we go. Use a very thin spatula to heat it up and slide this under and I have been able to get it get something off that's been stuck in the wrong place so it's not impossible it's just a unnecessary fiddle right so we're going to stick that down then our second page was this one and again we're just going to take the backing off We can apply some more of the glue. You can use any wet glue. I just happen to be using this one today because I've got it out. And it's not a lot, it's just a tiny little line. Just to give you a bit of wiggle room there. I don't know what that is, but that has to come off. Yuck. Right, again, fold that under. Butt it up as closely as you can to this one, keeping it as straight as possible. And before you totally stick it down, make sure they line up completely. Okay, so that's that one. That's that down. There we go. Burnish that. And obviously the last one is the same. So you just take off paper, add a little bit of glue. I mean you don't have to but if you if you know if you feel very confident with being able to put things down and they're in the right place then absolutely fine. Fold this under, butt it up as tight as you can. Try to leave no gap, but don't go over the spine, obviously. And before you stick it down completely, just make sure it all lines up, which it does. There we go. 
and put that down. Now you'll also have three um, spine covers which we need to stick down here and this is what I mean when I say to you that you need to just trim off the tiniest, tiniest little hair of a piece just so that it misses those folds. I mean that, I don't I don't know that there is a measurement for that. One, one thirty tooth, maybe. <laughs> um, certainly not measurable on a trimming, uh, you know, on a cutting board. So it's just a bit of hand trimming you'll need to do. And we put down our spine covers. And this time I didn't smooch the edges with the um, with the um, distress ink, this one here, because I don't want this to be like really obvious. These ones I did because I do want them to stand out, but I don't want these to stand out particularly. And we have one. Don't forget that this. Um, if you see all this, don't forget that this is my mock-up one. It's just, uh, you know, it's not a, not a finished item. Yours obviously won't have needed to put down the um, tape. So you won't have these marks on it. That covers that. Yep. Put some glue on this. Oh, actually, I'm going to put this one at the top, and I'll show you why. I hope this is all still in frame. Let me make sure. Yeah, it seems to be. Right, okay, I'm going to put this one at the top here. And these come completely edge to edge. We don't really want a whiteboard around them, so they are actually edge to edge. Let me just go over this one, which isn't adhered firmly. You do need to burnish everything with your bone folder. Now the reason I did, I put that there is because this one here at the bottom, here, you want it to come, you want it to be big, you want it to come right to the bottom of that piece there. You know, the others, we had a border, didn't we? We cut it so that we have like a little border. But this one here, we want it to completely cover so you don't trim this one. <clears throat> Just glue it up. Stick it down. <laughs> Stick it down. Keep away from your score line. So if you're going to leave a gap, leave it next to your score line and stick that down. And then, as I say, you can adhere your lace as I've done underneath, or you can put it on top if you want to. It's just that it will mostly cover up the, you know, this piece here, which I didn't really want. Right. Okay. So now then, we have this far. Now we need to do inside here. Now this pocket here is pretty straightforward, except, and I'll show you. Hold on, let's move that. Okay, so let's get the bottom pocket on first. That's pretty straightforward. I have cut it to leave a small a little bit wider gap at the top because that's where I'm going to apply my trim so let's get this one stuck down don't forget to smooch it all around with your with your color your ink I mean, you don't have to, it just gives a bit better and more professional finish. And if this is going to be classed as a luxury album, I think those little bits make the difference. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to 
erase these pencil marks here because they will show. Sorry if it's wobbling the camera a bit. There we go. And stick this down. I've already added, as you can see, one of the little cutter parts to it. There will be absolutely ample um, cutter parts and bits and pieces, you know, die cut bits and pieces that I've added to the to the kits. There will be loads of them. I've added sort of out of my own stash. Right, again we're just going to peel off the backings. She says. <laughs> Come on. Don't mess about. Two. Turn this around. So yeah, for the kits, if you're thinking of purchasing the kit, the only thing I'm actually charging for is the original white cardstock that is needed to make the album and the Bricato Estense paper pad and the postage everything else I'm putting into it is free all of my bits and pieces embellishments that's the word embellishments all of my time etc that's all going for free right now then this is a really good trick because if you're making something and you know you don't want to waste the whole sheet of paper so, for example, you would normally put a whole sheet of paper down, then stick your pocket on top, but all of this under here is wasted, in a sense. So, another way to do it is to cut a piece that is just slightly longer, just, you know, maybe half an inch longer than the, than the actual piece that you want, and then to do what I call a T-shirt cut, and that is to... Um, the bit where it overlaps here, like this, you make a mark, so it's about half, a, half an inch here and half an inch in as well, and you just cut this out. It's there to there. No sense in wasting designer paper. It costs a fortune. Right, okay, now what you have in effect is you slide that into there like that and nobody would ever know once it's stuck down that that is not a whole sheet, you know? So I've smooched all round it. I don't smooch this bit, this bit here, because that makes it obvious that it's not a whole sheet. So I just smooch around the outside edges. Okay, let's get the backing paper off of there. And again for this one, I am going to use my collal glue because I may need to wiggle it about to get it exactly where I want it inside the pocket. a bit of this and also it helps it's a bit of extra stick you know it helps so put some along the bottom right so I'm going to oh one thing that is really useful before I stick that down is if you put a ruler or a bone folder in here and you just use it to push down not too much, but a bit to loosen your pocket when it's a flat pocket like this. 
because that actually stretches this paper and it means it's easier to get your bits and you know your tags and things like that in and it will definitely be easier to get this in so this will slide in here as I said and I'm going to arrange it push it down see how useful that glue is is because it doesn't sort of stick down before you've had a chance to wiggle this around she says come out to lift that up push this in it's a fiddly job but you know it makes a difference between being able to have a pocket here and not being able to have a pocket here. It actually really, really wants to stick right. There we go. Right, there we are. So that's in. Give that a good burnish. Give that a good burnish. And then, you know, like I've been saying all the time, you can put your own embellishments and that on there. What I did with this one was this went along the top here and then obviously I made a, some flowers here on this one here I put just be happy and I might add some more flowers or something along the top but anyway so you can do what you like right now then let's open this one out and this is our half page pocket and we're going to do exactly the same thing so we're going to take this top piece that I asked you to cut and we are going to slip that in there we're going to glue it up slip that in there in exactly the same way that we just did that other one okay so i have smooched around the, the edges there and i'm going to apply some glue that allows me to move it around a bit Let's see if we can get this in. Here you go. Don't mess about. This pocket doesn't need stretching because if you remember rightly, we had folds behind it. I'm just going to push this down going to leave that small edge at the side there like that push that down there we go so again you can see that normally I guess we would have used a whole piece of paper to cover that entire page and then put the pocket on the top but by doing it this way we don't need to so this is my pocket cover yep always always measure it you know hold it up to it dry before you actually stick it down so that you can see where it's going to go there we go oops no nope, that's not where we go if that wasn't straight right Try again. There. There we go. There we go. Give it a good burnish. And once you've decorated it, that is your pocket. 
where you can fit lots of these um, picture mats in here. You can fit tags in here. And because it's a half, half page, it's fine if it overhangs the edge. Um, I, I have also cut some little tags to be able to pull this in and out. Um, let me see if I can see any to hand. see them to hand at the moment but I will show you by the end of the video oh here's one so there are lots of tags that you can attach to your um, picture mats so that when you slide them into the pockets uh, this one is this way so that when you slide them into your pockets like that you can have a decorative pat tag if you want to, in order to pull it out. Okay? Right, so that's those. That's that side pocket. Now, for this, we've stuck that spine down. Uh, where is this one? Um, 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 oh, got my page folded over onto it. So what I've done with this, because it's such a narrow spine, I mean it really is narrow, by the time you've put your, um, you've got your little gaps, I've just cut a very thin strip, maybe eighth of an inch, of some of the gold paper to keep the theme going. And I've put that along there and also it adds that little bit of extra richness. So let's open this up and we can stick that on. Close this. <clears throat> and this is just simply a case of running some glue down it and sticking it down. going to take a bit of that off because it's just too much glue blobbed out and it will stick all around the sides that's better and I'm just going to line that up and pop that on there just because it finishes it off nicely um, right okay now this is another little tip and trick for you if you get glue on the the good side of your mirror card don't worry about it don't panic about it leave it alone until it's dry it's got to be completely dry and then you can just go over it with an eraser like that and that will take off any residues that you have on the wrong you know on the good side that you don't want to be there don't try to do it while it's wet Excuse me, just going to have a sip of water. Great. Now this is your plain page. Nothing difficult about that, so I'm just going to stick that down. Take that piece off there. Oops. Would help if it was lined up properly. There we go. All the way around, little gap, about eighth of an inch. Stick that down. Like I say, we do need a plain page that has just flat elements on it so that the book will fold up nicely. It, it's not too thick in certain places. I mean, I've calculated this one so that we can put some nice um, embellishments on this, on the inside pages. But you do need a plain page. And what I did was used my 
the corner pieces, the corner brackets that I've cut out just to fancy it up and like I say these will be in your kit that's these are going to stick down here 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 and obviously another one in the other corner but they're going to stick down like that okay that gives it a little fancy element um, <clears throat> without padding the page out too much right we're almost there so what we're going to do here um, I didn't add anything to the top of this because this is pearlized card it looks very nice and I just put a few little pearls and embellishments on here because I think it's busy enough with what's going on underneath okay right so let's lift this flap out of the way for the moment and let us do the same thing that we did before and that is um, that's the top of the page this one so this again is going to just slip inside here just by you know a little bit more than the other pages have done it's going to line up and we want it to cover that where we've stuck it down so that's going to come across a bit more there we go and it's going to go up to the spine there it's not going to cover these two outside tiny tiny little edges but you won't even notice that but we do need it so that it sort of slips inside this okay so again i'm going to going to take any risks I'm going to use this glue but you can use you know double-sided tape if you want to or ordinary glue whichever glue you use and I'm going to pop this in here you can actually hold this pocket up a little bit because it has got those hinges on it. It's not a flat pocket. Now the same with this. If you get any of this glue where you don't want it to be, like on here, like I have, wait till it's dry. Don't try and remove it now. Wait until it's dry and then you can simply rub it off. struggling with this today. It's one of those days I think for me. Come on, move across. Thank you. So that this piece can go in. Doesn't want to play today, does it? None of it. a bit more glue on it's dried so along the bottom it's it, like I say it is really actually really nice and warm here today and sunny it's so nice to see it makes such a change right let's see if I can do it sideways that might make it easier for me is the trick and I'm going to just move it across make sure that it misses that fold line up there miss the fold line and push it down there we go so that's that one like I say ignore this glue until it's completely dry which it is at the moment and then you can just gently rub it off and it won't take half your paper with it so there we go, it's taking most of it off at the moment. I'll wait till the rest of it dries completely. There we go. These things do happen whilst we're crafting. Right, so now we're going to stick the bottom piece on. 
I think my problem is is having added that um, temporary tape and um, it's more sticky than it should be really. <laughs> so it's preventing the slide or other things. Note to self, don't do that again. Repositional tape is not necessarily so by the look of it. Depends how many days you leave it. I've been wanting to film this for a few days now, but just haven't had the opportunity. Right, let's put it around this way. I think it looks nice that way. And this is just a straightforward pocket, so I'm just going to stick it on. I'm leaving a bigger gap at the top because I've got my edging to go along the top here, which is fine. So that's that one done. Right, now this one here is another form of t-shirt cut. Because this is even narrower than the last piece, I just don't have room to do a t-shirt cut. So all you need to do really is snip these corners off at an angle. So I'm just going to snip that off there. Snip that off there. You can see that what I've cut off is about well, it's just the tiniest piece look like that but it just makes the difference of being able to slip it inside that pocket right let's see if i can erase my lettering which i can't because this is the mock-up right now then again offer it up dry make sure that it will fit inside your pocket Um, you need to stretch your pocket again because this is a flat pocket. So with all of your flat pockets that don't have the folds behind them, give them a bit of a stretch. You don't have to absolutely ram this down, but just try to, you know, get as much space as you can. Let's see if that will fit. It should just be the tiniest piece really that goes inside. It doesn't go right inside. That's why I'm just doing that little little cut like that. Okie dokie, glue. Can I please just remind you if you're um, watching this video, Please, 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 could you give me a thumbs up for the video and a subscribe. So it's a like and subscribe because then I can get um, YouTube to recognise me more. The more thumbs up you get, the more attention you get. And that way I can get more people to have a look at the videos. So I really, really need your help on this, please. Right, let's see if this is ready to come off yet. Just gently rub it. Like I say, I usually leave it, you know, a couple of hours before I give it a rub just to make sure that it is coming off, if you see. And it doesn't take the paper with it. So that's fine. And over here. There we go. Get rid of that. I won't waste too much time fiddling about with that. I'll do that once I'm off camera. And then you can add your bits and pieces to embellish it however you like. I have added the trim here and here. And like I say, this will fit, you know, your big tags, especially in the back. All your big tags will fit in here, all your big picture mats. Um, and these are, they will take photos that are five 
by three and a quarter. They'll easily take that on the back or smaller ones if you want to. And then in your smaller pages, if you're buying the kit, you will find that there are these tags. They'll be rounded off by then. This back pocket here, because it has a hinge on it, will hold loads. I would say easily three, possibly even four. There are medium sized um, picture mats that will fit in here or here. You could just get lots and lots in this pocket here. Right, and it's very fortunate uh, for me, not planned, but I'm really pleased that it worked out that way. And that is that um, my closure, hold on, let's just get the lid on that glue. Right, my closure is that uh, this fits under here and keeps it closed. So it's just a worth noting that if you're going to be making your own one try to get it where it will it has something that will go underneath here i mean it's not essential it's you know it's nice but it's not essential right okay that leaves us with a couple of other pieces to do now then so that's that let's give that a good burnish the first piece uh, let's lock that underneath there for a moment to keep it out of the way. Go underneath there, please. Go underneath there, that's it. Push this down. Right, oops, it doesn't want to stay there. Okay, right, the first piece to do is this, which is the other side of this one, which is exactly the same. So you need your gold strip going to apply a nice strong glue so that it doesn't move around. I'm just going to blot it on myself a moment and stick your strip down. There we go. Move that across. Okay, that's perfect. Right, now, one of the last things we need to do is the spine cover, but we're not going to do that yet because we need to attach our charm to the outside first. Okay, so let's turn the Let's turn the album over and <clears throat> in the kit you will have this charm that I made. If you're making your own, basically I threaded, I used those um, long pin things here and I threaded a lot of beads on them, all different ones, and then turned the tops over to make loops. I think you could probably do it with a, a strong thread and just have lots of... Um, beads on a strong thread and then I've <coughs> excuse me I've added it to a chain and I've made sure that I have a loop at the top that's really the most important thing although you can do that with thread if you want to so now the way we're going to do this we're going to use a fairly large brad so that it doesn't slip out of there I'm going to put the brad in there and we're going to put the brad through this hole that we've made like that Okay, I'm going to press that down fairly, fairly well. Turn the album over and make sure the bread sort of goes sideways like that or diagonally really. And then open out the legs. And push that down firmly. And then we can cover it with our spine cover which is this and that will keep that nicely tucked in okay so we just need to stick this down and then after that there's one more piece to do oops stray bit of bling 
Um, oh, I've already put double-sided tape on it. That's good. But I think I'll also add some glue, certainly to where that brad opens out. In fact, let me put the glue directly on this and round it. I'm going to put a nice amount on there. Put the lid on. Uh, yep, taking both the bits of tape off, haven't I? Yep. And I'm now going to just line this up inside those score lines. See what I mean about tape? Once you put it down, it's staying there. Just line it up nice and neatly. Take the time to do it. And that covers that bread opening, press it down and hold it down, hold it down, just while it takes, there we go, there we go, because the wet glue soaks into the paper and stretches it, so that's fine. Right, one more thing to do, and that is <clears throat> to stick our spine, oh, goodness me. Right, well, before you do that, what I should have done, and I haven't done, so I'll do it off camera, is we need to stick this lace onto the spine. Can't very well do it with that, but anyway. Okay, so you will have some lace here and you just line it up in the middle, right side out, obviously, like that. So before you do the charm and the inside spine, you line up your lace, stick it down in the middle. So you have to do this with the album sort of shut like that because otherwise if you just do it with the album flat when you come to open the album when you come to close it it will just stretch it and it will break so then you stick down your lace either side trim it to fit at the top and bottom and you will have something that looks like this so it's just a nice little finishing touch and the lace goes over the spine and will come over onto the back as well. So it's just a little finishing touch. If I hadn't been, if I'd been mindful, I wouldn't have put this on. I suppose I could cut it since this is just my mock-up. Let me see if I can cut it and slip it in there. Um, no, I don't think I bothered risking it. I'll take that off off camera. But anyway, so that's how you do that, okay? And then you attach your charm and then finally you do the inside part of your spine pocket. So this is your finished album. It doesn't need a closure. And that, because it doesn't need a closure, it's left me plenty of room to do lots of decorating on the front. Okay, so it looks like this. Obviously with all your little bits and pieces on. Then you open it up like this. Here's your waterfall. You have this pocket here. Then there's your big pocket. And that opens out to your plain page. This is your multi pocket. It all folds up. And then again, this side opens out. There's your multi pocket. That's like that, and then that's like that with your booklet in here. Okay, I hope that you have found this useful and that you enjoy doing this. As I say, the last part is going to be the box, 
um, which I've had a few struggles with, that's why it's taken me so long. Um, once your album is closed, you see that everything fits in here really nicely, like that, and there's plenty of room for all of your pictures or whatever you want to put in here. Okay, so, um, yeah, please, please leave me a like and um, subscribe because I really do need some more viewers for my YouTube channel and um, good luck with your crafting. Take care. Bye for now.